Hello, welcome back. This is the continuation to the acrylic dog painting part one that I started, uh, um, a portrait. And the first, the first section was done in acrylics. So that's what I have here. Now I'm going to continue with oil paints. You can always paint with oils on top of acrylic. Just don't do it the other way around. Don't paint acrylic over oils because that's not going to work. It'll crackle and it'll peel off and all kinds of terrible things. All right, so what we have here are the colors are the primaries, ultramarine blue, cad yellow light, or I mean, um, yes, and cadmium red. Now I'm going to also, in my red section, I'm going to add a little bit of um, a lizard crimson, which is also a, a cool red, because I want to show you how to uh, make violet. If you don't, I also, if you don't have a dioxazine purple, which is what I may be using for the little purple flowers, little violets that we have here. So we'll get to that later. Um, okay, for now, this is the other thing that I'm, I'm using. It's called a liquid. And um, let me see if you can see it. Let's see how can, okay, there it is. Um, not sure if it's upside down or not. Let me see how that would be. All right. I have a bigger bottle of the same thing. It changes in color, but it's the same. Um, it doesn't, sometimes it's lighter. Doesn't matter. All right. The only thing with this is you have to keep it closed. You can't just leave your bottle open because it will dry up on you. And um, also when you're doing oil, some, some people have been painting for a while. They might just be used to painting a linseed oil. That was kind of like the go-to media, which is perfectly fine. You, this is just a, a choice that you have to, this dries, is great for glazing. And it also is, it dries fast. It dries faster than linseed oil. So, all right. So, always make sure you have a paper towel, quite a few, or a terry cloth, or something like that, that you can, um, that you're going to need it with oil paints. Alrighty, so... She is mostly different degrees and different um, colors of grays. So we're going to make up our grade that I usually go to, which is uh, half and half, more or less, ultramarine blue and raw umber. Okay, so I have the primaries, like I was saying, plus I also have a white. And um, the the dioxin purple, which not everybody's going to have have it, but I'll show you how to make it with just your primaries. Okay, so now I'm adding white to it because I want to get my grays. Now. It's a good idea to have a palette knife that's like this, that's got the little curve to it. So what a good thing to do is to come in here and now it's flat. Now you can compare your colors to see, oh, if you're gonna do the lighter grays are gonna be right in here. See, you squint your eyes and if you lose it, then that's what you want. Now you can go much darker gray, then you come in here and add more of your base medium, your two colors. So now I'm gonna add more of that combination. 
and now this gray is darker than this one and that way you can continue doing that you can make it I said oh I need a little more gray than that and then you have like a ribbon of a different degrees of gray and then you have your little flat knife palette knife to compare to certain areas all right there's might be a little bit of a distortion when you see this because it's not flat I put it uh, on top of a, a something because it's easier for me to paint to see what I'm doing okay so just so you know all right so let's get started in this case I think I'm gonna start with the eyes I'm gonna work my way from inside out it's not always the rule but in this case I don't want to paint myself into a corner where everything is wet and then the eyes okay so I'm using a round brush now one thing I've noticed when with new students is that when they start painting they seem to always pick up media quite a bit I'm talking media means like the liquid the liquid it's only a vehicle for your paint to go to your canvas so you don't have to keep adding media every time you start you you, you um, paint because um, if you do that it's going to get too wet too oily soupy and it's going to go all over the place and that's going to would be very hard to control all right so now see it's it's already thin enough that I don't have to be going into my media all the time. Now I'm going to start, the, I did the, the eye part and I'm going to do the center here. I always look at shapes. If it's helpful to you, I'm, gonna, I'm just going over kind of how I go about painting my, what I'm thinking in my head is uh, there's a dark area here between her eyes okay what shape is that see so you have a conversation with yourself and say oh that looks um I don't know you know what it looks like to me maybe like an urn whatever you think the shape is and it's almost um, almost black not quite as black as her eyes now I'm saying her eyes are, are black so what you don't want to do is you don't want to go into a, a, a your paint bottle and take um, the black you want to mix your own it's always better if if you did do that where you you used it from directly from the bottle what would happen is it, it would look like you have a hole on your canvas and that's not a good thing okay so i still have the, the the black here i'm going to go into my um her snout which is very very dark and it continues it ends somewhere in here but you don't really get to see where it ends because then she's got her little beard thing going and it's all one value so it just kind of melts into the hairs in here now i'm not going to go necessarily all the way 
down here just yet because I want to come in here with my light for the comforter, my light, my light colors. Okay, now from the center right here, this looks to me almost like a fountain of water going out. From the center, we're going, we're going out like this. Now right this area, that is a warmer color. It's not necessarily, um, It's got a little like a brownie color, kind of a warm. So I'm going to go to the to the raw umber and just use that. So I'm using the same kind of brush. You don't it doesn't have to be a round brush like this, but that's that works right now. Um, and I'm going spreading myself out like this and then I'm gonna look at other places that have that same warm color which would be right here un under So most of most of the of her is going to be those warm and gray and black. So how you make your own black is you do half and half raw ultramarine blue and raw umber. Okay. So now I'm going to come in here with a bigger brush and. I'm going to try to do now with um when you're doing oils most of the time probably almost always the color's not going to change much once it dries. So we won't have that like we do with the acrylics get darker, watercolors get lighter. We won't have that in here. You're going to get what you what you see is what you get. Now usually you hear me saying, oh, long sweeping strokes. But in a case like this, they're not so sweepy. They can be, because it's kind of furry. So sometimes I stipple, depending up and down, because you want texture in this case. So this is the stippling part, up and down like this. Okay, now I'm going to shift into a lighter, warmer color.
and that is the raw umber and white. It gives me a kind of I'm going to put a little bit of yellow, Naples, not yellow ochre. So it's like a little creaminess to it, creamy. But I want to keep it not too light because I'm going to come back and put get some of those flighty hairs. And so I want them to show up. So right now, my main objective is to make sure that every part of the canvas is covered with the oil paint. The second part after that is doing is going to be working on the background, and then I'm going to come in and do the The details like the hair the little strands of hair that are going over her eyes things like that And um, try to paint like if you go, don't go against the grain. Paint in the same way that the hair, if it's going, the hair's going this way, that's how you're going to paint in that direction. If you're doing waves, the same thing. Or wood grain. I mean, that's kind of, I maybe. Maybe I don't need to even mention it, but it's a good idea. Okay, now I think I have all her all of her face. Well, maybe not this part, not yet. Now I try to stay just a little, little bit away from the edge of her because I'm going to do the comforter right, she's laying on it, on the comforter. So I want to um, be able to come back and paint over that. All right, so there we have it. That's what I have so far. Now I'm going to go ahead and do the some of that background. And I kind of do like Now this background, I'm going to um, 
I'm doing it, but you can do more, probably another layer of painting of oil. But that, I won't do a video for that. It's, it's going to be up to you. That that's, is the same thing that I'm doing now, but you just repeat it. If you need to, you may not need to. You think you have pretty good coverage and you won't need to do it. Okay, now that makes her come out more and it's still not a white background. It's got a nice neutral uh, value to it. Okay, so now I'm gonna go in to do some of this. Um, well, I shouldn't have done that. I, I'm just gonna do some, the, I want, that's okay. I, I'm gonna use the, I ran out of white. Well, I still have some, but I think I'm gonna need more. So, so there we go. Okay, so my, I want this comforter, it's like a creamy comforter. It's not so, it's gonna, it's white, it's gonna read as white, but it's kind of bone white or ivory white. These round brushes are so good. See, you can go into a little corner like this. Tight little corner right there. And then you can come out here and here and just Spread it like this and you have a lot of coverage. You're covering a, a much larger area. So when you're using, you want to uh, paint a larger area, then you're going to have a little more liquid. If you notice, I've been using more in my brush, a little more. Now, if you were doing um, acrylics and not finishing it in oils like I am, just basically do it the same way. You just you would just um, not go as dark. So just it's, it's it's easy to forget when you're doing acrylics that your painting will get darker. So always remember the media that you're painting in. This is oil, so it's going to stay the same. Okay, so I think now this is a lighter. 
this was nothing in here. You didn't miss anything. I don't think. I hope not. This is a lighter value now than we had underneath. Now one thing to keep in mind with oils, white, when you use white, it takes the longest to dry of all the pigments. Okay, that's kind of how that comforter looks, kind of off, kind of ivory. All right, so now I'm going to come in here and add a little bit of white. There's an area in here where there's little flowers. Kind of, I think they're hydrangeas. Just floral, like that, that's all. And so now I'm gonna come in here, add a little bit of white so that I can get a pastel. Every time, anytime I wanna do that look of a pastel, you add white to it and that means that you're creating a tint a tint. Now the this is like a almost a bud. So it's kind of halfway open. So the shape of this halfway open bud is like a like an egg so remember what I was telling you at the beginning always look at the I think I told you I'm not sure now but look at the shape of things what shape is this bud I was looking at it and I thought oh it's a it's like an egg shape with a couple little points sticking out Now I'm going to have some of her hair whiskers are going to be going over that bud. See, it's always good to have your terry cloth handy in case you paint. with the wrong paint. That was acrylic. Okay, this is white. This is oil. Yeah, I like that color. It's kind of a peachy pink. So, I'm using both colors. Alycerin Crimson and Cadmium Red is how I get this peachy pink color. But you can do your own color. It doesn't have to be. Okay, so see that, that's basically the shape of an egg, an oval. Now the very, very center of the, the rosebud has a little dark, it's a little bit darker. And then there's like a line of definition. I 
remember this is fabric so it's not gonna we're not painting like a real bud this is a So now I have that, so I better, while I have that in my brush, I should go probably try to do the other two. So see, I've got the two reds, a little bit of each in the mixture. And here, on the one left side, it's going to be darker than on the right side. So closer to the green, it's darker or brighter, brighter red. It's like a bicolor. Okay, so now come in here with a lighter color. It's almost like a highlight. So remember, sometimes I talk about almost everything that you see from now on, start noticing that there's usually a, a light, a medium, and a dark. So even in this little comforter bud, there's the light, there's a medium and there's a bright or dark, darker color. There's always exceptions, you know, but for the most part, start looking, noticing things like that. This one is more faded because it's farther out anyways than this color. So this is a more vibrant color, a little bit more vibrant. All right, so now the green is my blue and the yellow. And it's a pastel also, so I'm going to add some white. There's like a little bulb here and then a bigger one. A little bulb. So there's three basic shapes to these buds. There's the little stem. Then there's that little round butt, bud here, little ball, the, that one, and then this one here. And then there's the main calyx. This is the calyx, and then it started, it's starting to open. Sometimes it helps that way if you understand what you're painting. This is, oh, divided into sections. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now... I love this, this green, this pastel green. It's like that. I like it so much. That's the color of my house. That's how I had my house painted. Oops, too much. So it's a very beneficial to learn how to mix your colors. Hopefully, as I'm painting, I'm, I'm, I'm teaching you how to mix your colors because um, 
you can save it's just more practical and you can save a lot of money also you don't have to make a pastel green you can make it yourself you just add some white to it and don't get too um it's good to know like what color should I get but think about somebody made that that combination from their the primaries so there's a way that you can also do that now um, It is fun to buy all kinds of different colors in, in that so that they're pre-mixed. It's just a good thing to know how to do it. Uh, so I made my colors by using the ultramarine blue, my greens, and the yellow, as I'm doing right now. So then you look at it and you say, okay, now I've got a green. Now how, what kind of green do I want? Do I want a bright green? Or do I want a kind of a faded green? So then you think, okay, I kind of want to tone it down. So that means that you, what do you tone it down with? You tone it down with the opposite in the color wheel. So I'm going to go with my red. And put it in here like this. That toned it down. I don't know if you can tell, but that toned it down right away. But now I want it to be a pastel. And so add a little bit of white. Yeah, like that. Okay. And that's just about the color that I want. So you always go across your color wheel to tone down, to gray down, however you want to call it. There's different ways to express it, but sometimes they're called broken colors. That's another way of saying it. it depends on... Okay, now there's two leaves here. So I want to make them a little... There's add a little shading to separate one from the other. So I'm adding a little darker. The same green with a little more blue to it, which darkens it. I'm using a small brush. I could use a bigger brush, but okay now this one on this side it's even way darker way darker like a black green so I, I, I dipped my brush into that black that I made from ultramarine blue and raw umber half and half there's my black so I need to make black green so now I'm using so there's my black green right right there So we're not making a real leaf. This is the way these sheets, these this comforters and materials are made. And so it's going to have a little different look to it. got my flat brush 
just a square, squarish brush, squarish flat brush. Now, I did notice that this had an even other darker value, the red, that is closer like this. Now, I'm using the Alyssa and Crimson to give that darker shade of red. So, but only, not the whole thing, only kind of closer to the, where that green calyx is. Okay, so I have like three reds there, and three values. Very dark, the medium peachy pink, and then the light highlight. I'm gonna come in here, add just a tiny bit of that color. All right, so now I'm going to do the little buds, I think. But before I do the buds, let's see. Yeah, I think I am, I'm going to do. It's already kind of dry. Okay. I can do the little, and notice that the, the calyx, there's a little bit of, um, like little antennas it looks like, but it's not, it's a calyx, so and it, it, it comes out like this. Some of these are quite pointy. I think I made this bud a little bit bigger, but that's okay. I'm gonna stay with it. So what I'm doing here, I'm making I'm coming here with my negative space to kind of alter the shape of my um, b my bud, which should be quite large. There we go.
All right, so now there's my dioxazin purple. So I can use this for my little violet flowers. And they're just kind of random insinuations of lilacs. Some of them just sort of melt them together. And some of them you can keep them a little separate like this. Now, I think I got them too clumped up, so what, I'm coming in here with a lighter value, and I'm opening them up a bit. See? So the voice to fix things with the negative space. It was getting too close to my pink flowers that I like, but I want to separate them from the lilacs. Now this can be out of focus, not detailed at all, just like a little bit of color in there. There's another little bit of cluster in here. I call them um, those little like uh, petals. There's like rabbit ears. Uh, I'll, it helps as a reminder to think of different types of shapes. This is what are you going to try to do here? Oh, it's some rabbit ears. See. Just have fun with it. It's not that important. This is just what you're trying to do is you want to mimic the way the eye sees. And the regular way is she's the center of interest. So you're going to be looking at her. And your eye is not going to look at detail over here or over there that much. The, it, the way the eye sees this area is kind of out of focus. But in here, it's more in focus. It's just the way our vision works. So that's what we're trying to achieve, that mimicking with the... In other words, we're not doing... We're having fun. We're not doing ultra... Um, it's called ultra realism which is um, an oxymoron, I think, because it's not, still not realist. If it's ultra, then it's not real. <laughs> but realism, that's, that's a, a type of painting, which is, I think it'd be kind of good to do also. Try different things. It's beautiful, though. I, I do like to see it. That's what art is about, right? We create our own stuff. In other words, I'm not not um, criticizing or making fun of ultra-realism. There's a lot of work that goes into that. But I'm just saying, you don't have to think of that much of a... extreme detail all right so now i noticed that this little has almost like a little red edge to define that petal a little more 
Now back here I have that almost a whisper of a leaf, but we want to I want to gray it down a little bit. As to where it meets with the and there's also other bits of foliage in there somewhere. This little ball here, one side is going to be lighter. See, I'm revisiting these areas because they were, it was too wet when I was doing them. But I do want to add a very dark, dark to this side of the bud. To one side. Then I have the dark on the left, the middle, and then the light, the highlight. Now, I am assessing my values, and I realize that this needs to be a little bit lighter, the tip of this. Of that bud. So here I am again with my negative space. All right, I think we're done with this section. Um, now, let's look back. Okay, I'm going to move this out of the way so you can take a better look. And this is the second, it will be three sections after all. So this is, I, we did the background. The, everything's oil now. Now we're going to let this, I'm going to come back to it tomorrow, which is when I will be adding some of the detail and uh, the hair on her, um, the little flighty hairs, which she's got quite a bit of. All right. Okay. Thank you for watching and I will see you tomorrow. Have a great day. Evening.